Hello there, let's talk briefly about the three major, major spinal cord tracts. I stress major because I know there are a lot more tracts running throughout the spinal cord, um, but today we're going to keep it simple. Um, this is primarily an aid for you to guide you in localizing the various lesions of the spinal cord. So let's jump right in with the cortical spinal tract also known as the pyramidal tract because this tract crosses over or decussates uh, while running through the medullary pyramids. Um, you'll also hear about the cortical bulbar tract running along with this, um, not really into the spinal cord because it exits in the brainstem, which is actually why it's called the cortical bulbar tract because it's referring to the brainstem, which is the bulb, and cortical bulbar carries motor information to the mouth. Um, so I already mentioned it, the cortical spinal tract is going to be carrying descending motor information. So right here we've got our brain, right here we've got medulla, and this line right here is just representing uh, the right and left side of the spinal cord. Right here we've got an axial section of the spinal cord to show you where these tracks are sitting. Uh, so let's jump right in. We start high up in motor cortex and we move down and once we reach the medulla we decussate or cross over move down through the spinal cord and out onto our target organ being a muscle of some sort. Uh, this tract in the spinal cord is going to be sitting right about here and it'll exit like this. Um, notice I didn't draw in where this would synapse. I'm not going to be talking about first and second order neurons because again we're keeping things simple. Uh, that is important but again keeping things simple helping you in localization. Moving right along to the DCML, which stands for dorsal columns, medial lemniscus. So the dorsal columns portion is the part of the tract that runs throughout the spinal cord. And once we get up into brainstem, uh, that's when we start referring to it as the medial lemniscus. So dorsal column medial lemniscus is carrying primarily sensory information of proprioception, discriminative and fine touch, and vibration. Um, so as always with the sensory system, we start out side of the spinal cord with our dorsal root ganglion, okay? Then we enter the spinal cord, move up, and synapse onto one of two nuclei, which is either the cuneate or the gracilis, depending on if we're carrying information regarding uh, upper body versus lower body. Okay, so once we synapse on that nucleus uh, in the brainstem, we then cross over and move up into the brain. And that tract is going to be sitting right in here. And keep in mind again, uh, gracilis and cuneate, they're gonna be separate and uh, separated into two separate uh, kind of divisions of the same tract. And it would enter like this, and here's our DRG. Okay. Moving along to our last one, the spinal thalamic or anterolateral tract. Um, it's called the anterolateral tract because of where it sits in the spinal cord. Pretty simple stuff. So we'll start again with our dorsal root ganglion, DRG. We're going to enter the spinal cord and cross over immediately. Wait. That's not necessarily true though. You've probably heard that the spinal thalamic tract is the only one that immediately crosses over, but that's not 100% true. It kind of does, but as it's crossing over, it can move up a level or two before then ascending the rest of the way. So just keep that in mind. It doesn't always cross over immediately. It can move up a couple of segments. And that tract sits right here, and it would enter from our DRG like this, and then cross over like that. And that is it. Well done. Um, I do plan on posting a more comprehensive guide to all the spinal cord tracks, so keep an eye out for that. Thank you.